The landing was the moment of greatest risk. If there were defending troops on the ground, getting ashore would be a bloody business. And for the hours or days it took to get the commander brigade established, the ships were immobile, vulnerable to air attack. For this critical moment, the transfer from sea to land, the Navy had to throw an air umbrella over San Carlos water, no matter what the cost. Without it, the whole operation would fail. There had been an elaborate attempt to confuse the Argentinians about what was going on. Raids all round the island, information leaked in London, they all pointed away from the idea of a single massive invasion. For an hour after dawn that Friday morning, there was peace and tranquility. The men got ashore unopposed and began digging in. It looked as though the plan was succeeding. The Falkland Islanders, stoical, undemonstrative people, greeted their liberators in a practical manner by repairing the flagpole. and, a little self-consciously, a Union Jack was raised. From now on, the islanders were to find themselves spectators at a battle fought for their benefit and waged all around them. The Argentinians had taken little notice of this small settlement until now, but within two hours of dawn, they started an unrelenting air attack. Canberra, large, white and obvious, made an inviting target. HMS Plymouth, assigned to protect, only just dodged two bombs herself. Attacking the warships, the Argentinians gave the supply ships time to unload and get the beachhead established. The first items ashore were the rapier anti-aircraft missiles. By the end of the first day they'd been set up, but they weren't yet effective. Delicate, precision equipment, it took time to settle and stabilise. Some idea of what the operator sees comes from this film of planes being shot down on the same day. It was taken through the sights of a frigate in the Falkland Sound. The attacks come at terrifying speed it needs slow motion to be sure what's happening.
the ship stationed at the entrance of the bay took the worst of the assault. Bombs being lobbed, a near miss. HMS Ardent was hit. She sank, 22 men died. After that first day, the defences were reassessed. Machine guns were strapped along the ship's sides. Even jets, when they dived below the missiles, put themselves within range. The Bofors guns aboard HMS Fearless claimed two planes. The gun crews, mostly 17 years old, soon had more battle experience than anyone else in the Navy. In the next major attack on the Sunday, HMS Antelope was struck. We saw a hole in each side, assumed a bomb had gone through without exploding. Many ships were having such lucky escapes. Then we realized the holes didn't match. There were two unexploded bombs on board. That evening, as a bomb disposal expert worked to clear it, one of the bombs blew up. Helicopters probed the darkness for men in the water or on the deck. We could just see some of the ship's company moving about, trapped between the cold water and the fire. Either could kill. The interference comes from the ship's radar. Then the fire took hold and the ship started to blow itself up. Antelope was the same type as Ardent. Neither survived a fire following a bomb going off. We were astonished that metal ships could burn with such fury but she didn't die easily. At dawn, she was still smoldering, but mangled beyond salvation. The British commanders had seriously underestimated the Argentine Air Force, committing its planes and its pilots with an almost reckless willingness. Frente a nuestra cámara, A4B, carreteando y saliendo, suponemos que hacia la zona de Malvinas. In San Carlos Bay, the helicopters ducked into the hillsides, using their colour as camouflage. But this time, the main attack was against the fleet at sea. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Air at Military Collectibles. So, in today's video, it is the people have asked me, we put it up for a poll, uh, some people asked me to do a basic impression for the Royal Marine Commandos in the Falklands. This is a starter kit for somebody that is just getting into Falklands, off banner, um, Cold War, it, it's all pretty much the same stuff. There are ways to change this to make it better and more authentic, but this is a fine, this is a grand setup or a starter setup for somebody that wants to do uh, Falklands up and or something like that. So, as I said, we have a Royal Marines Commando in the Falklands uh, that's the notable by the beret, the uh, famous bottle green beret of the commandos. 
we're holding the rifle that they would have used at the time which is the SLR or the L1A1 depending who you want to ask uh, so I'll just put this on the ground and we'll go through the equipment so that's the standard rifle the webbing is the 58 pattern now I have this set up so you see this from one or two pictures from the Falklands whereas they wear the um, poncho roll on top and you see some other guys will actually have two they'll have one on top and one on bottom um, and it is a lot more comfortable to actually wear it this way than the, the other way so we will just take off the webbing if I can there we go so standard 58 pattern webbing as I said um, this is cheap and cheerful easy enough to get uh, all military shows and stuff you'll find them the uniform is the 68 pattern tunic and pants um, how you can donate it it's 68 pattern we will go into it more detail but the simple way to do it is 68 pattern does not have bellows pockets and it does not have a field dress pocket on the sleeve um, that's it that's the, the simple camouflage uh, the 68 pattern jacket now underneath this they will have the famous woolly pulley uniform or jumper now I have this one badged up for Royal Marine Commandos with his para wings warrant officer and on the other side you have Royal Marines Commandos uh, rank is a tricky thing in relation to reenacting you have to look at your age your experience things like that um, this jumper is an original jumper it came with the warrant officer badge on it I am about the age of what a, a, a young warrant officer would have been in the, uh, at that time anyway so I can get away with it um, if I was to wear it at a reenactment and stuff like that. 68 pattern pants, also how you can tell a 68 pattern pants is there is a um, field dressing pocket on the sleeve, on, on the crotch rather than on the sleeve of the jacket and non bellwood pockets. The boots are the DMS boot, standard DMS boot with the ankle putties, now I don't have these on 100% correctly, I just threw them on for the purpose of the video. Um, Royal Marine Commandos in the Falklands, you can see them, you can get away with wearing um, private purchase hiking boots, things like that. Um, also in our banner, um, later on after this, uh, 84, you will see the combat high boots coming in. So I mean, pair of DSMs, pair of combat high boots, and you can have the multitude of the 70s, 80s, and way into the 90s if you so wished. Um, as for the, the 68 pattern combat stuff, you see that being worn up into the 90s because there was so much surplus of it um, and guys didn't like the 84 pattern stuff. So, I hope you like the basic loadout, basic equipment, starter equipment for somebody that wants to do Royal Marine Commandos in the Falklands. Um, if you like what we provide here at Air at Millage Collectibles, please like, please subscribe and please tune in for the next video. And as always, if you want to get in contact with the channel, at the top of the video description there is an email. Thank you.